Hey everybody, we're going to do the white belt one steps. Again, we're going to do all five white belt one steps. If you go to the kids class, there's only one, two, three that you need to know. But you're welcome to do four or five just for the fun of it. Uh, the idea of the one steps, you don't need anything to hit. If you have a bag or a bob, not your brother or sister, at home, you can hit those if you want to. But really the idea, especially at white and yellow belt, was for people to get the control they needed. So they could kick really close, really fast punch really close, really fast without making any contact, kind of movie style, so that you can make it, you know, really fast, realistic, and then stop just short of actually hitting the target. This gets you a better control of your body and gives you a better feel for exactly how long your arm is. So I can punch all the way up and stop just in front of the target. It gives me a much better understanding of the length of my arm than just punching through the target every time, okay? On the one steps, you're also trying to hit specific targets whenever possible. So. You don't want to just aim at nothing in the air and just let your kicks and punches fly around the room. If you don't have a specific thing to aim at, you could like aim for a you know, light switch on the wall. You could use your shadow to aim at, and your shadow has a head and a body. Like you aim for yourself in the mirror if you have a mirror. Just something that gives you specific targets that you're aiming for as you hit. Okay? So white belt number one and one, two, and three are all three moves long. So white belt number one, if you have a partner at testing, or at a tournament, you would say, attack, and they would punch you toward your face. And you do a left high block, which a high block is just kind of the block you do when you got caught doing, you know, nothing at all. Your hands were down, whoa, and you kind of just throw your hand up to do a block. Probably not the best way to block your face, but again, when pretending on white, on number one, you kind of got caught unprepared. So number one, you do a high block with the left, when a punch to the solar plexus, that's a little notch just below your sternum. So bone, 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 notch. Trying to hit right there, keeping that other hand by your chin. When you step back with the hands up in front, kick. <coughs> now the kicks and the one steps can go to whatever target you feel comfortable aiming. If you can kick to the chin, well, that's awesome. If you can kick to the solar plexus, that's great. If you're not as flexible and you're kicking below the belt or to the knee, the idea is to aim for specific targets, not just throw a kick somewhere. You can kick somebody on the hip and maybe have very little damage at all. Okay? So again, white one number one, we do a left high lock, right punch. Right front kick. Ay At the end of each combination, you want to jump back with your hands up. If you ever have to punch and kick somebody, whether it's sparring or maybe your own self-preservation, the moment you stop kicking or punching, that gives the other person the opportunity to hit back. So you should be jumping back to make space just as a point of habit. Okay? One last time, white ball number one, we do our left high block, right punch, hands up, and ay With our right front kick, we make some space. Number two, we pretend someone's attacking us from the right side. So we're going to drop our weight down as a block over your shoulder with your right hand doing that inner four block. Again, your other hand in your combos in one step is just by your chin like you'd be sparring. We're going to reach that hand back and do a back fist, either to the temple that's right behind the eye, the little recessed part there, or behind the jaw below the ear is your mandibular nerve. It's a good spot to hit. Again, if you hit one of those spots with medium power, you'll have a lot more damage than blasting someone across the hard part of the skull and most likely breaking your hand instead. So we're doing that right back fist, turn our left toes back, we psych it with the right foot, and jump back with your hands up. So again, right ball number two, we do the right block, right back fist, right side kick, we make some space. One more time, right ball number two, block over the shoulder, back fist, side kick, making some space. Now in white ball number three, we're not blocking a specific punch or kick. We just see some aggressive stuff coming our way. And we're using your feet to hit them before they get close enough to punch or grab you. So as opposed to blocking a specific attack, we're kind of preemptively striking here. We're using the length of your leg to kick them away. Now again, if you have a partner at a tournament or testing and you say attack and they do their punch, you're probably going to end up kind of kicking their hand out of the way and that's fine. But don't think of this as learning to block someone's punch with your foot. That's a little ridiculous. You're not going to ever do that. The idea is just you're using the length of your leg to kind of stop them before they're close enough to hit you. Okay? So wait for number three, your hands are up. Again, it's three moves long. Left crescent kick, right side kick, and a right knife hand strike. And we're aiming the knife hand strike at the center of the neck or just behind the ear again are two good spots to hit. We on our last move, we jump back with the hands up and kind of assess the situation here. Am I going to take off running? Do I, you know, fist bump my, you know, sparring partner, what is going to happen next? So again, we do our left crescent kick to make some space. It sets up our right side kick to a specific target and that right knife hand strike to the neck. We step back with your hands up. One more time, white ball number three. Crescent kick, side kick, ayah! And we jump back with your hands up, okay? So four and five are for adults. So if you're kids, you don't have to watch this, so unless you just want to learn them for fun. 
But again, one, two, and three are all three moves long. Four is four moves. Five is five moves. Isn't that super easy? I didn't make these combos up, so if you don't like them, you can't complain to me, sorry. So weight belt number four, we're using your legs again, but a little more specific. As this person is coming towards me, I'm trying to front kick at the waistline to kind of buckle the person forward as they're reaching out to grab me or punch me or whatever. And the idea is you want to about kicking it right on the waist. So it's not a kick upward to the groin, but a kick forward at the waist to kind of buckle the person in half. So I'm doing a right front kick and I want to land off to the side. So I have a whole new set of targets over here. I do this left side kick, whether you aim for the knee for your personal defense or something higher if you're feeling fancy. And our left hand does a hammer fist. So the hammer fist is like you're swinging a hammer with your fist, but we're going to do it to the side. And we're hammer fisting just at the base of the skull at the top of the neck. So where the skull ends and the neck begins is we're aiming for that hammer fist. And then we want to shift our weight over and throw a punch with your right hand to the ribs as you finish. We do a high left hammer fist and a lower right punch. So let's watch that one more time. So it goes right front kick, left side kick, and then left hammer fist, right punch. So you go right, left, left, right, and again, we always jump back with your hands up. If you're done hitting, you should jump out and kind of assess, is that person attacking you now? Are you making a run for it? Or are you doing another combination? So again, we got white belt number four, right front kick, left side kick, left hammer fist, right punch, and we open the space. Now the idea in five is five moves long. Again, we're kind of going with this concept of using your foot, your crescent kick to create space. Bad guy's coming toward me. I'm not waiting to see what he's going to throw at me. I'm just kicking before he's close enough to grab me or punch me or whatever. So I do that left outside crescent kick. And again, we're going for that front kick. And if you want to aim at the waistline again, or aim at the solar plexus up high, we're going to do a front kick, side kick combination. So I think if you're practicing this with a self-defense concept in mind, you would do a front kick to the waist and a side kick to the knee. The kick to the waist would kind of buckle them backward, and that would get you a really good shot to an extreme leg as you kick down to the knee. And you're just thinking a little more athletic and fun, you can do your front kick to the body and the side kick to the head or something like that. Just do the kicks and punches, I'm sorry, the kicks rather, to the targets that you're able to reach. Then we do a right back fist high to the temple and a left punch to the solar plexus again. We jump back. And again, remember you sparring, we're focusing on touching the person. We won't hurt them. When you're doing one steps, if you have a person that's maybe going to stand there and be your partner, you're aiming for targets that would cause the maximum amount of damage even if the amount of force you add is not as much as you want. Okay. So again, number five, that's five moves. Left crescent kick, right front kick, side kick, back fist. Kick. And we jump back with the hands up. One more time, number five, left crescent kick, right front kick, side kick, right back fist, left punch. And we jump back with the hands up. Peace cake, right guys? Thank you for watching this and for hanging with us. Hope your practice at home goes good. See you later.